Mozambique has attracted large investment projects in natural resources, which means the country's high growth rates should continue. Some analysts believe that Mozambique might be able to generate revenues from natural gas, coal, and hydroelectric capacity greater than its donor assistance within five years. But the vast majority of the country works in subsistence agriculture, and over half the population remains below the poverty line. Bhutan has a small and relatively undeveloped economy that relies on hydropower, agriculture, and forestry. It exports a large amount of hydropower to India, which has the potential to spur sustainable growth in the next few years, as long as Bhutan works to fix its chronic delays in construction. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's India has received high marks from analysts, even with delayed reforms. The services industry is a major source of India's economic growth, accounting for nearly two-thirds of its output with less than one-third of its labor force. Yet problems such as corruption, poverty, and discrimination against women and girls continue to hold back the country. Eighty-five percent of the population works in agriculture, and a small sector exports natural resources including mineral deposits such as gold, copper, and oil. But the government has numerous problematic areas, including security for investors, poor investor confidence, the privatization of state institutions, and the restoration of integrity to state institutions. About two-thirds of the population works in agriculture-related industries. The country is the world's largest producer and exporter of cocoa beans and is also a major player in the coffee and palm oil industries. Uzbekistan has been slowly transitioning from its Soviet past to a market-based economy. It's the fifth largest cotton exporter and also has natural gas and gold. Notably, the country is working toward enforcing bans on child labor in its cotton harvesting. Myanmar, one of the poorest nations in Southeast Asia, started an economic overhaul in 2011 in an attempt to reintegrate into the global economy. The country has a young labor force and natural resources, and it has attracted loads of foreign investment. Living standards for the majority of population, however, have not improved much. The Democratic Republic of Congo has huge natural resource wealth which it hasn't been able to efficiently monetize because of systemic corruption, conflict, and political instability. That said, its economic is slowly recovering since the tumultuous 1990s. Turkmenistan's extremely corrupt economy relies on two major industries, cotton and gas. The former Soviet Republic, which has the fourth largest known gas reserves in the world, recently started sending its gas to China, and it may even start shipping gas over to Europe. But prospects in the near future are discouraging, however, because of endemic corruption, a poor educational system, government misuse of oil and gas revenues, and, the capital's, reluctance to adopt market reforms, according to the CIA factbook. Ethiopia's economy is mostly agriculture-based, but the government has made a push to diversify into manufacturing, textiles, and energy generation. But while the country has seen and, for the World Bank, will continue to see high GDP growth, 
per capita income remains once of the lowest in the world.